I'm going to be real here. I am genuinely blown away and have enjoyed my time immensely so far in player versus player in Final Fantasy XIV, and I would be shocked if by the end of day tomorrow I didn't have the armor because I was up last night until like 4 o'clock in the morning on a work day, last night spamming it, and I was like, oh no, I can't stop. To say the absolute least, Crystalline Conflict has been a blast. When we first heard about the PvP rework, my ears did perk up. Mostly because I was wondering, is this really going to turn out and attract attention? Because PvP in Final Fantasy XIV uh, does not have the best reputation in history. Ask any veteran if they'd be like, do you like PvP? And they'd be like, PvP? In my Final Fantasy XIV? But you see, everything changed when the Fire Patch 6.1 Nation attacked. Is the patch is fire? I'm gonna get a dislike for that. <laughs> but as always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a thick Cat Daddy adventure plate on that like button and Cat Daddy on that subscribe button. So I'm gonna start with the fundamentals. Adventure plates is something that I honestly wasn't totally sold on when I first heard about them. I was like, this seems like a lot of effort to go for something that we just might not see, just might not use, but I... I admit I was quite wrong. I, a few things have made me cry laughing with unapologetic joy as loading into PvP matches. It honestly adds a very unique flair and allows you to distinguish and have like your own personality shine through. I'm a huge fan of them actually. For the next point, picking up some job to take into the Crystalline Conflict, which is something that we're all going to need to do. The PvP skills each job has is completely different from their PvE skills. And dramatically so, actually. That's an understatement. Oh, they're different. No, they're very, very different. With some extremely inventive abilities that we saw pruned. Like Scholar used to once upon a time. <laughs> I'm showing my age now. <laughs> I've been playing for 10 years. <laughs> Scholar used to apply a healing reduction to enemies in PvE with Miasma. And that's returned in PvP in the form of mummification. Did I expect that or see that? That coming? Hell no, but it's awesome. People are gonna be like, oh my god, okay, the PvE skills are separate from the PvP. Does this water down the class design? Not at all. Not even close. In fact, I'd argue that distinct, unique, meaningful class differences are more clear than ever in PvP now. PvE has many, many skills, and heaven knows, I genuinely would not trade in like the incredible mass majority of my skills even though there are so many like scholar's kit as much as people say as it's bloated in x cogitation functions very differently from a dissipation which obviously for functions differently than an aether flow which functions differently from an indom all of those skills have a reason and a niche to use them which makes me absolutely thrilled at the separation between pvp and pve in pvp you do not want that many buttons so that you can't uh, is, use them as effectively like, look at the successes in the, like, PvP, like, space. Like, Overwatch, and don't cringe, I, I know that it's had a bit of a bump, but no one can deny, in 2016, that was the thing. But Overwatch has a super teeny tiny slim amount. Same with League of Legends. A handful of meaningful abilities is usually really better in PvP style games. But before I describe Scholar's Mummification ability, which is reducing healing for enemies, or another awesome ability in the Scholar's Kit is Expedient, which raises party speed in PvP, that is powerful. What about Sage's Toxicon, which increases the damage taken by enemies? Pretty good, right? Or the fact that Sage can zip around the field with Icarus, which is on a 10 second cooldown that can store up to two charges. That mm, is chef's kiss. I have loved playing the sage. Or what about the white mage's powerful miracle of nature that transforms an enemy into a little thing? It basically takes them out of the fight for a bit. We're talking about genuinely meaningful choices here, not <laughs> meaningful choices. Pick a covenant. We're talking actually meaningful choices here. On that note, I'm going to segue into something about roles, and I find it very refreshing is tanks don't just tank and hit like wet noodles. Healers don't just heal and just heal bot the thing. They definitely lean more, like for tanks, they lean more into living and being annoying as frigging heck, but they aren't just damage sponges. And healers are not just healing and spamming healing, they're more like utility monsters with a spot of healing. Everyone is more responsible for their own health and survivability, which is very welcome to me. And I'm sure many others, because it's just like, how to say it. Obviously healers can help sustain the team to some level. Some healers lean into this more than others, but the pressure of spamming cure non-stop or medica isn't there like it was before in past PvP. And likewise, as a DPS or tank, you aren't totally reliant on your healer. So honestly, 
It's a pro in both ways in my mind. Now I want to talk about how each job also has, has its own distinct limit break that is very different from every other job so far. Like, <laughs> ridiculously so. Let's compare just the healers, which you're just like, haha, this, the healer ult's gonna heal. No. Scholar summons Seraph that bays the field in a metric ton of shields and heals. Okay, that's the closest to what you'd expect. Now we're gonna completely deviate. The Sage makes a giant fire truck U zone that flips off range damage completely and heavily penalizes anyone close. Basically, it is like a Reinhardt shield on steroids. It is intense. I actually really love the Sage's ult. It's so good. And they can even reposition it. It's very, very strong when used right. White Mage stuns and blasts damage and I started blasting, and amplifies their damage, which really turns into a brutal combo when they start throwing out their afflatus, and <laughs> it's just like, whoa. And now for the Ast, it reduces incoming damage and amplifies outgoing damage for the team by a disgusting amount. We're talking like it starts at 30% more damage going out, 30% less damage coming in, uh, yeah. And notice how all of those in the healer role are different? This goes for all of the other roles too, like ranged, physical, DPS, dancers is very different from bards, which is very different from machinists. To say the least, the kits are not homogenized at all. Extremely distinct. Next up, I want to talk about match length, and I genuinely find that the length of matches is just extremely solid. It's not too long and it's not too short. It's long enough that you can really grit your teeth and bite into the match when against players of similar level of skill. It will sometimes take like seven minutes depending on how much you and the enemy team fight on the payload, but there is a massive difference in skill, or if there is a massive difference in skill, which is honestly unfun for both teams. Honestly, it sucks to roll someone and it sucks to get rolled, but the payload is quickly going to be blasted to the end in like two minutes and then you can just recube. The rewards with this quick of matches, it's actually really rewarding. Even if you don't want the PvP rewards, you're getting Tome Stones, you're getting experience. This is not a bad way to do it. Is it the most efficient leveling? No. But you know what? I can guarantee you that if you want to be engaged when you level, this has really been doing it for me. Also, another thing about the timings is I don't feel like I get tilted, but a good match where I'm being challenged and engaged, I'm thrilled, and it lasts the time to do it. In terms of the actual mechanics of getting to the payload and pushing it, I think that this was actually very, very smart to implement it that, this way. In standard PvP, without an objective, like, just PvP, like, you wipe out the enemy team, players could honestly just wall hug, and things would become very boring as both a player and a viewer. Peace and love, please don't hate me. But P... <laughs> Peace and love, you know? <laughs> Looking at certain games, you know that that's true. I'm trying to not offend people, that's why I say peace and love. But darn it, you guys know that's true. But the, how to say, there is still tactical usage of walls. That is going to be something more in a different video that I talk about, which is very useful. But you need to put yourself into the fight and be engaged, otherwise the payload is just going to zip to the finish line and you lose. You cannot basically actively, like, run away from the payload and just be like, hey, I'm hiding here and I'm just hugging the wall, making sure that everything just fails. I honestly find this to be very good and fair. A proper and proper tactical usage of the cooldowns that you do have and tanks being sent forward to say stall rather than sending the black mage. Like these tactics are extremely effective. I say I want to end this video on the talking about skill expression. This game mode some people might mistakenly presume is just mash all buttons, but that will certainly lead you down a path of total failure. A well-timed stun such as the Dancer's ultimate is going to be outright devastating, or a burst from a Machinist ultimate on a low health healer? Poof, there went that thing. It's the same idea for all cooldowns in all of the jobs. Take White Mage's stun. Very, very powerful. I mean, the transform. Really, almost any cooldown. Like, I haven't seen too many cooldowns that I'm like, meh wrap up this video, overall my impressions of PvP so far are outstandingly positive. I am genuinely blown away and have enjoyed my time immensely so far in it. I would be shocked if <laughs> by the end of day tomorrow I didn't have the armor because honestly, like I cannot emphasize guys, I was up until like 4 o'clock in the morning today and it is a work day and I'm just trying to get this video in before I start and oh my god. Last night spamming it, I, I was hooked and I'm like, oh no, I can't stop. Now, yeah, take care everyone, and I hope that you are having a ton of fun with patch 6.1, and as always, remember to drop a thick Cat Daddy adventure plate on that like button, and Cat Daddy that subscribe button. Take care everyone.